All right, guys, welcome to the new CodeLink update. This is the Halloween update, and I just want to give you a run through on some of the new features and demo some of the stuff that I've added into the game. This is a pretty big update, and a lot of stuff has changed. So I know it's going to piss some of you guys off, but that's the nature of the beast. And you know, when I uh, when I put this stuff out there for everybody to test, you know, I can't I can't please everyone. It's just going to happen when you have to wipe your account and start all over. So I'm sorry. But this is just the way it goes. All right, first things first. Let's go ahead and click the new button because we're going to create a new account. And you can read through the information here. And basically, it explains you know what what's expected of you. Uh, your, for username and passwords, it can only consist of alphanumeric characters. You're not allowed to put any uh, weird characters or ASCII character codes or anything goofy like that. Um, explains how the upgrades and updates work. It also explains that you know the information is stored on the server and any attempt to manipulate that server outside of the game is going to result in a lifetime ban. So right here at the bottom it also states right there next to the button that this is a work in progress and you may encounter elements of the game that are not functional. Don't hate me, help me. It's that simple. Alright so we're going to go ahead and create a new account. I'm going to create an account called user with a password password. And you will be required an email address and you will be sent an, e uh, an email with an activation link to activate your account. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the code link, b2gmail.com. Uh, All right, if you try to do anything that's goofy and it doesn't like you, it'll give you a little warning. For example, if I put a bad character, it says, hey, you've got invalid character. If you try to create a duplicate user account or somebody already has that username, it'll warn you that that username's been taken. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click the sign up button. You see that it creates a new account. Now, normally you'd be able to click the login button, which I'll do, and you will see that it's warning me that my account has not been activated. So I'm going to go ahead and click the back button. I'm going to go ahead and tab out here, head up to my email, and you can see that I've got a new email activation link. For those of you who have uh, email that views HTML, this will look a lot prettier. Go ahead and click the link. It tells you your account has been activated. Simple enough. Go ahead and close that page. We can close our browser, head back into the game, click the login button, and off we go. Now for purposes of this video, I'm going to uh, load up another account so that I can show you some of the features because obviously I don't have my uh, SatNet manager and I do not have my diagnostics module. All right, so here we are. I've loaded up an account that has a, a couple of the extra rigs on it and a few programs installed. All right, the first thing I'm gonna show you is the options. So we're gonna jump into the options. You'll notice a new option menu across the top called General Game Options. The first button will let you reset your account. If you click the reset button, it starts your account back at the beginning. It will send you another email. You have to activate the account like you did the first time. Everything is exactly the same as when you're creating a new account. However, you're not required to fill out the new, the new agent form. Um, the next thing you want to take a look at is um, under general game options is the mission objective emails. You can turn that off so you will not receive emails anymore about missions. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. I did tweak uh, the desktop image the way it loads. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the options module. Um, we'll go ahead and hop into the emails. Um, the email scripts have been completely re redone. You'll notice now that you have an address book. So your address book will show you, you know, any... It, it's basically an association between the user number and a player's name. So once you find out who a player is associated with that user number, you can add them to your contact book, and any email sent from that person will show up, you know, from that user number will show up as that person. So obviously if I go ahead and, and click the little email button and send myself an email, Boof, it pops up here, it shows the subject of the email, and you can see that rather than having the user number displayed, it's showing my name. Very simple. The emails have been, the whole email script has been completely redone. And now you can purge the entire email inbox. So once you click the purge button, you'll see that all the emails are gone. All right. Uh, that pretty much sums that one up. Let's jump into the SatNet Manager. You guys are going to love this. All right, the SatNet Manager had uh, very limited functionality before, and this used to be a field that you could type into. No longer can you just type in a SatNet address. You have to gain access to it through the game, and once you gain access to it, you can bookmark it. So you never have to worry about hacking through it again. This is going to be great when you start finding LANs all over the place because those little local access networks are going to really help add, add some elements to the game, especially when it comes to uh, specialized software and hardware. 
So let's go ahead and uh, see how this works. I'm going to open up my GPS module. You can see that I'm collected, connected to the global network and I'm going to jump right into the uh, a LAN. So once all I have to do is click it. Bam, I'm in the LAN. So you can already see there's a little office set up and you can see that I have to go from one trusted computer to the next and make it through all the various components. Uh, in the database view you can see right now in this, this LAN I have a modem and an authentication server. So I want to get out of the LAN and head back to the global network, pow, back to the global network. Or I want to jump into the CodeLink network, there we go, back into the CodeLink network. Um, now you're also able to uh, add these bookmarks, so I'm going to go ahead and click the bookmark button. And the only field that you are allowed to edit is the label. So I'm going to label this test demo and add the bookmark. Poof, there we go. You'll see at the bottom now I have a test demo. So that pretty much sums up the, the SatNet manager. It's basically just a way so that you can, uh, all the various networks that you find, uh, you guys are constantly saying, oh, we need more, we need more computers on the global server. And I'm like, guys, there are other networks. The global server is not the only network in the game. It is just a small part of it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the SatNet Manager. And let's see, is there anything else on here I need to show you? Oh, yes, yes, I do. But I do not have it loaded up. That is freaking great. Um, let me go ahead and jump back into the global network. Let's see where that is. I wish I had some satnets loaded. I'm going to go ahead and bounce a connection real quick just so I can show you how this works. Uh, we'll go through the orientation server. Makes it pretty simple. And we're going to use the public proxy. All right. Uh, the public proxy, now you can see I bounced through a route. I'm going to go ahead and click one of my routes and I'm going to click save. If I try to connect to another route, for example, I'll disconnect and I'll connect to something here. Let's, I'll, I'll just connect back to the orientation server so I can show you this. If I try to click one of my uh, bounce route managers, I'm going to get a little message that says, hey, if you're, if you're collect, connecting to uh, a bounce route, you're going to lose the connection. Make sure you've saved any proxies onto this chain. So how do you save proxies onto a chain? It's simple. If I click one of these buttons that already have a, a little highlight showing me something's been saved on it, meaning that's a completely different route, then it's going to disconnect me and connect to that route. However, if I click something empty, I can save it. I can click on that one or click on this one. It doesn't matter. You can save it on those empty routes. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this, uh, the diagnostics module. Um, the diagnostics module has changed a lot, and I think you guys will be very happy. I've implemented a lot of the suggestions on the forums, although many of them have been in the works for a long time. Um, so we're going to take a look at this console here. Obviously, you still got all the, the, the GUI options to load your scripts and, you know, whatever. I don't have any. But, uh, and then it shows you your remote connection and your local and, you know, all your little progress bars, whatever. You guys know that. So we're going to go over here and I'm going to start doing some commands. First thing I'm going to type is help. And that'll give me a list of the available commands that we have in the game. Um, some of the commands that you want to take a look at, uh, we can do uh, local.list. This will list all the files. And you'll notice that the files in the directory are, you can access those by an ID. You do not need to type the, the entire file name out. So, for example, if I want to copy, which is local dot f copy, and then I type the ID, I want to copy the file killer. Bam. So now, if you hop over here into your file manager, you will see that we just copied the file killer. And I'm going to shrink this down just so you guys can keep taking a look at that while I'm doing what I'm doing. All right. Uh, same thing with fi with uh, removing files. You know, I want to remove a file is local dot f kill dot and uh, the the file ID is number 11. Bam, file killer has been deleted. You can see that it pops off there. Um, you can also install programs this way. So we're going to do a program.install.10. And you can see my file killer is now being installed. And you can do the same thing with uh, removing programs, the same way. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but you know, I just need to show you some of these commands. Help. Um, you can, you know, some of these commands are not going to be functional, although the, the code is in place and ready to flip on. They're not going to be functional until the next update when we are going to be able to start accessing each other's accounts. Um, the next one is going to be a fairly heavy multiplayer update with whatever tweaks and fixes that I need to do, you know, that we run into with this update. So uh, the ones that are not going to work yet are going to be F. Uh, fget and fput, which are you know putting uh, remote files, ping, uh, the script load, list, unload, run, and stop. Those are all functional. Uh, the net stats and net routes are also functional. The program install and remove is is functional as well. 
Uh, a lot of the back end stuff has really severely been rewritten. Um, then some of the stuff that I want to take on in the next update, I'm rewriting all the mission code and I'm going to pull a lot of the, the generation out of the game itself and put them in flat files so that these missions can be generated by players. You know, where we can create our own missions, something unique, and, you know, throw different little wild card things in them and, and include them in the game. You also notice that your email is listed across the top just in case you forget what email was associated with this account because they're, you know, if you reset that account, you're going to get an email to that email address to reactivate the account again. Um, and just on a little side note, I, you know, I really appreciate all the feedback that I've been getting, and, and you know, I've gotten a lot of help with the game, but, you know, and I and I try to make a conscious effort to reply on the forums to pretty much everyone that's there. Anybody that asks a question, you know, a legitimate question, you know, I try to make an effort to, to reply to it. However, there's one thing that, that kind of disturbs me, and I find myself saying this over and over and over again, and I just want to throw this out there for you guys. You know, if I ask you for feedback on a movie, you know, I, ma I made a movie, and I want you to tell me what you think about the movie. It is important that you watch the entire movie. Don't don't play 15 minutes of Code Link and jump on and say, man, it'd be really awesome to have a console. Guys, we have a console. It just takes time for you to build up the money to get to it. If you really just want to test everything and you don't care to play the game itself, you just want to see everything that there is, shoot me an email or a private message on the forum. I will be more than happy to, to drop you a million dollars in your account so that you can buy everything there is and test everything there is. But don't come on and be like, hey, uh, I really think you should uh, you know, add this or add that. And it's already in the game. You just haven't had a chance to get to it yet. So before you make all these suggestions and go through and tell me what you don't like or what I should add, make sure it's not already in the game first. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy this update. And uh, keep in mind that the next update will probably be exactly a month from the 31st of October. Um, the December 1st update will be a multiplayer update. We will be able to use and modify lands that are created by us and I've already added some of that functionality into the game for me and a couple other developers that are going to be you know building some lands for us to access and play on um, the December 1st update will include things where we can you know detect and start to you know create little guilds or clans or corporations or groups whatever you want to call them where hackers can start to work together and or start fighting each other so stay tuned it's gonna be fucking dope